Hi guys, it's Monica. Thank you so much for joining me. I am going to do a tag video and this is a tag video that I did a year ago and I'm going to redo it for this new year and it's uh, Susan, Little Poets Tag. It's her New Year's tag and it's always something that really makes me think when I read the questions and when I answer the questions. So a year ago I did it and it goes my heat. I'm in my bathroom. <laughs> Welcome to my bathroom I should say, right? Um, a year ago I did it and the first question was how would you rate 2020 on a scale of 1 to 10? So I went and I found my old video and I played it because I wanted to see how I rated 2020 in comparison to this year. And quite frankly, in 2020, I said it was the worst year ever. It was the worst year ever. Uh, COVID, my father, all sorts of different things going on in my life. It was just the pits. So this year, how would I go look back on 2021? And on a scale to one, how would I rate that? How would I rate 2021? And you know what? 2021 had some really good times, had some bad times, but I looked at 20, I started out 2021 as a year of recovery, trying to get over the pain of my father's loss. I didn't think in 2021 that I would be able to do that as readily or as easily as I thought I should, you know, to be able to function and go forward. And my year, my word that I used to describe last year to think about it for this year was breathe, take a deep breath. And, um, and that's what I really did. I kind of tried to win. I went into recovery mode. Um, I, th I thought that the year, you know, had some promise and I was optimistic. So 2021 for me was a solid eight. We were blessed that nobody got sick with COVID. We were blessed to have two beautiful weddings. We, Jay and I flew to Atlanta for my stepson Justin's wedding. He married Tamara, it was a beautiful wedding. And then Jay and I went for a mini vacation to Savannah and then to Hilton Head where we had rented a little Airbnb on the water. It was, it was beautiful, it was a nice getaway. Came back and we had a goal-orientated year, a strong goal-orientated year. And um, we had another wedding in the fall. My son Marty got married. His wife Angela, they had a beautiful fall wedding, perfect weather. She was absolutely gorgeous. My, my grandson, Augie, was there, um, and he watched his mom and dad get married. My new step-grandson, Kaysen. It was just a beautiful, beautiful wedding. I loved, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. So between the goal of 2021 and achieving that goal, that was really huge for me. So a solid eight was 2021, and it was those two weddings. I think the second question I haven't written down, just so I wouldn't forget them, is what's your favorite memory? Well, I just kind of shared them, right? Um, definitely the two weddings. The vacation we took was just absolutely phenomenal, going down there, just being together. Jay and I just, we enjoy low-key lifestyle, we enjoy being together, we enjoy walking the beach, he enjoys golfing, we enjoy a lot of things together. But seeing our children, his son, my son, get married, have beautiful weddings, marry women that are just absolutely beautiful, that we totally embrace as family members is the crowning glory. And yeah, I am, um, you know, I feel that that, that experience and then achieving our goals. We achieved some really strong goals that we had set for ourselves. And that was just, to me, was awesome. So question number three, did you change as a person in 2021? Yes, I did, without a doubt. Um, I, I remember an old saying, and many of you probably remember it as well. The old saying is that 
if you stand with one foot in the past and one foot in the future moving forward, but you can't move out of that, you're anchored because you have that foot in the past, then you pee all over your present, right? Because you can't move forward. You can't go where you want to go because you're so anchored. And I focused on unanchoring myself, taking that foot out of the past, creating more memories, creating experiences, and taking that foot out of the past and firmly planting it in the present so both feet could go forward to the future. I didn't want to pee all over my present. And, um, and that's what I really worked on because I think the death of my father really cemented the fact that life is fleeting. Even though he, he lived to be in his 90s, life was fleeting. But then I had another death and that was the death of my brother in September. And that was so totally out of left field, so totally unexpected. And he was 70 years old, 70 years old. And that threw me for a total loop. It was hard to overcome it, but I, but I overcame it because I felt that my brother, who in, survived Vietnam, right? He came home from Vietnam, but he never, ever came home from Vietnam. I, I don't know how to explain it. He never really left Vietnam. So I would say that my brother died in Vietnam, even though physically he was here. And I feel now that he, I do believe he's at peace. His life was so, you know, while he had everything he needed, right? I took care of him in many ways. His life was so upsetting and different for him. So now he's with my dad. I believe the two of them are together up there watching us and just, you know, just watching, just being with us. Um, number four, favorite video. And you know what? I did not have a favorite video in 2021. Not that I did um, at all. You know, I, I found 2021 again was that, that phase of working myself forward, not wallowing in the past and, and all of that. So my channel probably hurt a little bit in growth because I didn't devote as much time to creating content. I was really splintered. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, what I wanted to do, I didn't think anyone wanted to listen to. So I really didn't have a favorite video in 2021. Uh, number five, one or two products that blew you away. Oh my gosh. So I've talked about this product line quite a, quite a few times in different videos. And I truthfully will tell you, it absolutely did blow me away once I started to consistently use it. And you're probably all going to know, I'm going to mention spin, uh, Pe Peaches Skin Care. I love the cleanser. I love the exfoliation system. I'm loving the moisturizer. Uh, I'm loving... I'm just loving the products. I'm loving the tips that Lisa gave me. Now I'm not ready to obviously embrace gray, go makeup free, but I am loving the canvas. Th that whole that whole blew me that whole line blew me away. And Lisa's tips, milk and magnesia, um, the the apple cider vinegar just totally, totally blew me away. So I, I would definitely say that is the one product line. Now I, I was I placed an order. Some of this, yes, originally you can, can say oh, it was sent to you. Well, yes, absolutely, originally it was sent to me, but I purchased with my own money. I mean, to me, that's a huge testimonial because there's a lot of products I don't buy, you know, especially if it's a high-end product because I can't justify spending 80 bucks for a foundation. That's not in my budget. That's not in my lifestyle, and I won't do it to review a product on YouTube. I just won't. So, um, Peaches Skincare blew me away, and the other product that blew me away, you guys are probably going to guess it, it's my e-bike. I love my e-bike. Glenda, my e-bike is absolutely awesome. It kills me that I can't ride in the winter. I love my e-bike so much that I knew that I wanted to have custom fenders, I wanted to have a custom basket, there was, I, bu I bought fancy lights for the, the wheels, I don't have them installed yet. Um, and I bought it, you know, a couple of different accessories. I love my e-bike and because I love my e-bike so much and because I'm so thrilled with the quality of my e-bike that I bought a second bike. Mm. 
I wasn't going to say anything. So my second bike is more of a, uh, a bum around bike, right? It's like going around a campground. It's like biking on the beach. It's Glender is a street bike. It's comfortable. It's awesome if I'm going to pedal for 30, 40 miles, which I've done 30 miles on her. And it's comfortable. I'm sitting upright. It's just everything about Glenda is comfortable street bike. But I just wanted a little sassy thing I could whip around and do some sand biking. So I got myself, I'm naming her, I think, the Sassy Wench. She's really cute. I don't have her physically yet, um, but I have her, but she's still in the shop because I'm having a suspension put on, you know, for shock. So yeah, my e-bikes. Oh my God, my husband, I'm, I'm surprised he let me, you know, he didn't try to talk me out of it, <laughs> but he didn't. Um, number six, what creator on YouTube inspired you the most in 2021? You know, first I wasn't going to answer that question. I, I hate questions that you have to select somebody because I always feel like I'm going to leave someone out and stuff like that. But there's a, there's a, there's a couple of people. But there's one person in particular, in particular that has inspired me the most. And this one person, I, I've had the, the pleasure of meeting her in, in real life. I would say that we are extremely close YouTube friends and extremely close, even though we are a great distance apart mileage-wise, we're close as ladies, as women, um, very, very close. And this woman, I met her. I watched her change. I watched her go from the end of 2020 going through an extreme tragedy in her personal life. Extreme, I mean, difficult, difficult thing if you can think of losing a child as being the worst thing you can go through as a mother. I watched her go through that. The pain was enormous. I watched her come out of that other end. Not that you ever fully come out of that other end, and I know this some other YouTubers that I'm, you know, Babs, Take Control of Beauty is one that I know has gone through a personal tra tragedy as well. So I know it's so difficult. But this one woman, I watched her become goal oriented She got a job and her job was running a Facebook page. And I watched her grow that Facebook page. I think it might have been like six, seven, eight thousand subscribers, or not subscribers, but you know, fans or followers on that page to almost 20,000 or maybe even over. I watched her tackle that. I watched her grow and find a niche that she loved, which was wig reviewing. So she reviews wigs, she does products, she does amazing makeup. Many of you know who she is. I, I, I absolutely adore her. I saw her open a second channel and I said to her, my goodness, you know what? having two channels is going to be difficult and it is difficult but i saw her open that second channel which was basically primarily wig reviews and i saw her blossom oh my god has she blossomed and then i saw her be so inspired that she went on a diet i hate to use the word diet she changed her lifestyle and she lost over 50 pounds I mean, she's absolutely amazing. I'm going to link both her channels, her beauty channel and her wig review channel, because both deserve a little love. And if you're new and you haven't, you know, you're new to her channel and you go over, please tell her I sent you, I said hello, but you won't be sorry. So if you're into alternate hair, maybe, you may, maybe your hair is thinning, it doesn't matter. Um, and if you want to look at different wigs and you want to look at, she's beautiful, it's Marlene. And uh, her, her channel is Marlene's uh, Wig and Chat Room. And her beauty channel is Fab and Glam, Marlene Fab and Glam, over 50, I believe. I'm going to link both of them. But, it, but she has totally inspired me. I watched her lose weight and I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get on that bandwagon. I'm going to get right back up there and do it. I saw her overcome that super tragedy of losing a child. And I thought, oh my gosh, I understand some of her pain, but I didn't really. I lost a parent. And then I lost a brother. I can't even imagine the pain of that. I can't even imagine. And I saw her go through it, and I saw Babs go through it. I'm going to link Babs' channel below as well for you. But... Yeah, the person, the creator that really inspired me from 
beauty looks to wig reviews to being successful at, on a job, a full-time job, basically on Facebook, managing a group of women, mostly 20,000. Can you imagine what that was like? Um, totally, totally inspired me. So yes, number six, what is the creator on YouTube that inspired me? Definitely my lovely friend Marlene. Had the pleasure of meeting her and I hope that in 2022 we get together again. Number seven, what is the funniest, meanest, strangest comment? I get a ton of comments that are in a spam filter that never see the sight of day. But um, I get a lot of marriage proposals <laughs> from poor lonely people. Um, marriage proposals, oh my gosh, yeah. So I don't really have any anyone that sticks out this past year. Um, the normal, oh my God, you've had a facelift, or you need a facelift, or your jowls are down by your ankles. Hey, you know what? Crap, I'm 68. I'm not trying to look like I'm 28. I'm 68. I just want to be a good 68. But I, I, I'm not. I'm not a model. I'm not a, a movie star. <laughs> I'm, I'm. I'm just a. I'm just like you. I'm just a real regular person who struggles with weight struggles with issues. I'm 68. So yeah, my jowls can be down by my ankles. Oh, big deal. I'll try to pick them up. Um, what is my proudest accomplishment of 2021? Mm. My proudest accomplishment of 2021 has to be the financial goal that Jay and I set. We set a goal to get out of debt, to work really hard to get out of debt. And still enjoy life while we were doing it. In other words, we were not going to deny ourselves. I mean, look at that. I got two e-bikes, right? They're not inexpensive. And to be able to buy them um, said a lot for us. So we both set that goal to work hard to chisel at our debt in big, big gulps and chew it up and spit it out. So my proudest accomplishment personally, our financial goal was getting out of debt. And then the family goal was watching those two beautiful couples get married. Oh my gosh, I just absolutely loved it. The last one is, what is the one word you would use to describe yourself in 2021? Or what would the word that I would use? Um, not necessarily to describe myself, but my goal. So last year it was breathe. That was the word. Take a deep breath. You know, this year it's going to be move. That's the only thing that comes to mind. Keep moving keep working it, keep saving, keep going towards our goals. We set our goals for this coming year. Um, move physically, lose weight, but physically keep moving. That's my goal. That's my word, move. So anyways, I love this tag. Um, I'm super thrilled that Susan did it. And of course, little poet, I'll link her information below. She's inviting any content creator. I'm going to invite any content creators. Any of you out there that want to do this, please jump on and do it. It's a great tag. It's a great way to get to know each other. And if you go, you folks watching, let me know what your goals are. What is the word that describes you in 2022? Mine, move. I hope by the end of the year, I've moved a lot of fat off my body. I've had the opportunity to ride my e-bike like crazy and that my skin keeps dramatically improving because of peaches. I'm pretty sure it will. And, uh, and yeah, in that I just take every day and live it to the fullest. That, that's my goal. So thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate every single one of you. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Please like the video, leave a comment, run on over, go visit Marlene, visit both her channel. And I'm going to link Babs because she's gone through an awful lot as well. And I, I think when you've experienced death yourself and you see other people go through those losses, it totally resonates with you. So visit them, tell them I said hello, and if you hop over to Susan from here, which I know you all know Susan, tell her I sent you as well. Anyways, thank you all so much. Love to you all, and I will see you in my next video.